This washing machine has developed a fault. Whenever you turn the selector and put it on a program, it's not actually working. It only works on a couple of the actual programs that are on there. It will work on the very hot, but some of the cooler ones it just doesn't work at all. The washing machine is staying cold. So we've determined that the actual circuit board on this machine is faulty, so we're going to replace it. On this particular machine, if you open the door, there is a label there which has the make on. It also has the serial number of the machine and the model which ensures you get the correct parts for this machine. Before we do anything, we're going to ensure the selector knob is in the off position and then we're going to use a piece of tape and we're just going to tape that so that it can't move from that position. It's critical when you're working on any appliance that you unplug it from the mains. That involves tracing the actual lead to the machine and ensuring you unplug the correct appliance. There have been people in the past that have unplugged the wrong appliance, they've gone back to the machine and they've been electrocuted. So it's critical that you unplug the correct machine. We now need to remove the three screws that are holding the top onto the machine. Unfortunately, this is a very odd size of screw that they've used in there. It's actually a 7mm. So I've actually had to go out and buy a 7mm nut runner to be able to get in there. I do have two small socket sets. None of the sockets that I have will actually fit that. 7mm is a very odd size. So we're just going to remove those three screws. Once we've done that, we can then pull back on the lid. I've now slid the lid back far enough so that we can work on this. We now just need to remove the salt dispenser drawer. And then we need to remove the two screws in there that are holding in the salt dispenser. And I'm just going to lift the salt dispenser clear. I've now removed the top completely, that just slid out. We now need to remove these plastic side pieces. And these just slide back and then lift off. We've now got a screw to remove there and one at the opposite side. And if you look just there, you can see a plastic clip. There's one of those at each side that need releasing like so. That's the one at the opposite side, which is just inside of the soap dispenser. We then need to get hold of that part and just lift that up so that it's actually clear. And then on the inside of the machine, lower down there are three plastic clips that need pressing to release the fascia panel. Once you've released those, you can then pull the fascia forwards. Just need to check that none of the wiring is going to get stretched. It's now a good idea to get your new circuit board and check it against the one that you're taking out to ensure it is the correct one. And as you can see that is identical. Now you do have to be careful when you're buying these because apparently you can buy these that are unprogrammed. If you get an unprogrammed one, your machine will not work. You will have to get an engineer to come and program it. So it's important that you do get one that is programmed. Because of the wiring on this machine, we can't actually move that part onto the top to work on it. So I'm just going to put some tape around here and that'll stop it from falling off. You can now see that the circuit board is held in position just with a few clips. So we need to depress those clips and we can lift the circuit board clear of the fascia. Before you unplug any of the connectors, it's a good idea to take a picture using a mobile phone or a camera just to ensure you get them back in the correct place. I've actually looked at these and it does actually look like they will only go back in one place but you do never know so it is important that you get them back in the exact same position. So we're now going to start unplugging all the connectors. Some of these actually have a latch on that is holding the connector in position so you do need to pull the latch back before you can actually unplug it. You can now lift that clear. We can now plug the connectors into the new circuit board.
And only to make sure the plastic's in the correct position and the critical part is ensuring that that part goes onto that part because that is the actual dial on the front of the machine. So we now just need to ensure that it's clipped into position wherever there is a clip. We can now remove the tape. And then we can carefully put the fascia back in position. Ensuring that there's no wires trapped. So we now just need to push that through so that all the plastic lugs go back in. We can now replace these two screws. We can then simply put these plastic guys back in position. To do that, just push one end under there where it fits in far enough so that you can get the plastic through the bowls and then just push it forwards. It's as simple as that to put those back. We now need to clip the soap dispenser back into position. And then we can replace the two screws that hold the soap dispenser dry. It's also important when you're doing a job like this that you never get the screws mixed up, so always put them down in a place where you know that you're using the correct screw in the correct position. We can now take the lid and slide that back into position. And we can then replace the three screws at the back. We can then reinsert the saw dry. Now what we need to do is plug the machine back in and test it. I've now put the machine back where it goes so I can now remove the tape from the front. All that was doing was holding that knob in position until we changed the circuit board behind.